All right, it is time. It is time for the game review. We are talking about In the Year of the Dragon. In the Year of the Dragon is a 2007 release. The designer, the amazing Stefan Feld. The artists are Harold Liskey and Michael Menzel. And the publisher is uh, Aaliyah or Ravensburger, depending on who you're, who you're getting your games from. Paul, why don't you take us down a little, a, a little stroll and, and describe to us what In the Year of the Dragon is and how it plays. Sure, sure. Like, uh, so kind of a top level view. Uh, you are a Chinese ruler who's trying to have the most prosperous year compared to the other rulers in your region. So, you know, in for and ah, reset. Hey, you're a Chinese ruler, <laughs> <laughs> and you're trying to have the most prosperous year in comparison to all these other year uh, rulers, and it's the year of the dragon. So the game is broken up into 12 turns or 12 months. Uh, each month, an event will happen that you'll have to deal with. Uh, some might give you prestige. Others will dismiss uh, people from your kingdom. How you prepare and deal with these events will determine uh, if you're the best ruler. Uh, so basically, a turn goes something like this. You will pick and execute an action tile. You will then pick a craft person to add to your kingdom. And then you'll deal with the event. Uh, some of them will give you points, but most will uh, remove craft people from your uh, kingdom if you don't meet certain requirements. Then you move on to the next month. So you do that 12 times, and voila, the game uh, is over. Uh, some like, like neat little features of the game is basically uh, you'll, you get to see all 12 events uh, throughout the year. So there's some form of planning that can be done. However... Uh, each, each month, uh, the action tiles, which are, there are seven of them, get shuffled and then grouped together uh, so that each action grouping changes each month. Uh, and what happens is, like, someone will, uh, when it's your turn, you will pick an action and you will do that thing. Sometimes they'll be like, build more pagodas or get rice or whatever. The rub is that once someone has taken that action, it will cost you three money in order to take uh, for someone else to take that action. So turn order is very important. Uh, and there's a track. And the way you move up turn order track is that uh, the craft people that you pick, uh, they, they'll have an ability that will be magnified by the, the uh, action uh, tile you pick. But they all have this uh, turn order coefficient. And the weaker craft, craft people will have the higher uh, turn order coefficient. So basically, the game is jockeying between, uh, you know, getting what you need, uh, planning for turn order, uh, deciding when to expand, and more importantly, when to sacrifice the things that you don't need. Uh, the problem is, you know, the other problem is, like, everyone else is doing this. So it's kind of like trying to do yoga in a crowded phone booth. <laughs> That's about it. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, so one of the interesting things about the game is those events. Those events uh, are, are, are probably the most unique aspect to the game. It's, it's, it's actually, it plays quite differently than most other Steffenfeld games. It's, it's probably the most different of his designs, or at least close to that. Um, but those events that are coming are one of the things that really, really defines the game. And it creates, it, it's not just um, that there is such a thing, but it's actually what it does for the game. And what, the, what, it does, what it does, for me anyway, is it gives the game this really strong feeling of disaster management. Exactly. It's like, like the game isn't about building the best society. It isn't about building up. Like, like in Agricola, for, for instance, every time you flip over a new card, it's giving you a new ability, a new thing that you can do better, right? And, and it's improving you in some way. Whereas after the first two rounds, everything in, in the Year of the Dragon is a threat to, to, your, to your happy home. Except fireworks, fireworks, you know, is the repeat from. That. I guess that's true. Yes, fire, fire, but but once, but you could even look at at that in a in a certain way and say somebody is sure. gaining points and it's probably not me or maybe not me. Yep. No. Jake, it's, what? It's really good. Go go, go on. Let Jake. Let's, yeah, Jake, Jake, what's your thoughts? 
Well, you know, for me, I saw a lot of things that I recognized. Um, disclaimer is we played this online, not in person, obviously, and my brain was kind of fried to go in, but the teach was great and the experience was great. And it seemed to me like it was almost like a tiny little engine builder that only lasted like one round. And then you had to completely, like it never really, it, it, it never built. Like you have to do an engine builder, but it only loads for like a turn. And then you have to redo your engine building for the next problem. Huh. And, that, and that was that was difficult for me to maintain. Like I only think I had one turn where looking back, I was like, yes, that was the right move for that turn. And all the rest, I, it was too it was too complex in the moment for me to, I won't say win, but like even really make a smart move. But I could see that that's sort of what was happening or what it felt like was what was happening. No, it's definitely a very tactical game, and you're trying to hold together your house with bubble gum. Yeah, I mean, it was it's it's constantly a decision of what will help me now and also for the next turn, but not for three turns away. Um, yeah, I think the more you play it, the more you're trying to to go turns ahead. But uh, I listen. I would have said that the key to the game is not trying to do everything. The key to the game is letting some of your people die and realizing when I can allow this calamity to hit me full force and instead just go for things that get me points at this point because my engine yeah. my engine will be hurt, but my engine will survive. I would have yeah. said that, except that then we play with Ben this week and he crushes us, and he... He did, he did crush us. <laughs> uh, I will say that, you know, he wears that, uh, like, a little jewel in his crown, and he got like, that, shut up, Tom, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It was a fun gaming experience, it was. So that said, I think, I think at the end, the stats showed that I lost the least number of guys, or something like that, or something weird like that, which I, I, I don't know how that was possible. But yeah, no, it, it the way I found like, you know, we played this game early in my uh, my development. And, you know, I, I feel that this is a really great bridge game. You know, it bridges like if you were if I was to move someone to more heavy euros, like from, say, Catan, this would be one of those games that I would put in because it, you know, it really introduces concepts like attrition or order manipulation or long-term planning in, in a way you know, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. uh, you'll see in other Euros. Uh, and I really li like what the thing that this does that is kind of amazing to me is that it's short. It's not a long game. So it has like high Euro to play time density. You know? Yeah, like it's yeah. Almo it's almost a, what's it called? It's almost a filler. Uh, in it's, it's not. We didn't play it that way. But like when you know what you're doing, it, it goes by really quick. Well, there, yeah. to be fair, there was you, a moment. But you, I was just gonna say there was a moment at one point when Tom was like, "Come on, guys, beer and peanuts. Let's go. Let's go." <laughs> but but Tom's beer all, and always peanuts that. is what I said. Beer, is that what I said? Beer and peanuts. Yeah. No, pretzels. Pretzels. I mean pretzels. That's what I mean. <laughs> well, Tom. Tom has become like you know this uh, early sleeping in person. So like it, I mean it was like eight fifteen. So he was, it was past his bedtime. I am out at 6 a.m. each morning so that I can, I can write or rewrite three hours of my novel before my writing partner gets in and we have to start working on the screenplay. So that, that's the reason I'm, I'm, I've changed up my schedule. I figured if we're in quarantine, I might as well do that. That's what I do. Yeah, I am. I'm, a, I'm an early to bed, early to rise I'm not shaming you, Tom. dork. I'm, I'm not shaming you. Yeah, shaming no, you, you. are. Just... I think you are. I think we all know this. I am not shaming you. <laughs> Harshly. <laughs> <laughs> Look, nothing is happening past 7 o'clock in the night anyway, right? You're not missing anything. Um, I believe my grandmother would have said nothing good happens after 7. At oh, uh, well, I, there you go. I think that's how she would put it. But yes. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, the, it, it, it is a game that does so many things. It, it introduces the concepts of... Uh, uh, of action economy right and mm -hmm. if yeah. i take if i take this character early on taking the action that corresponds to that character i'm going to get twice the benefit that other players are going to get for that action and and 
can I utilize that? Can I gain an advantage on that? There are the dragon scrolls that if I take those early in the game, it costs me almost all my money. It's, it's a huge, huge upfront cost, but the benefit of that goes on entirely for the entire rest of the game. I'm getting points each and every round for the rest of the game, and I do not have to take any actions to get those points. Whereas there are other, there are other scoring things where you... You can get points every round and probably get more points than the Dragon Scrolls, but you have to take the action to do so, right? Yeah, no, it's it's. I think it's a great training game. It's a really good game to basically introduce people to concepts that they might not have known if they, you know, started with Sorry or something like that. I think I think it's. it's yeah, a really I had a lot game. of fun playing it, but I could tell right away that I would have had to play it a bunch more times before I really mm -hmm. did, you know put up any kind of competition. Yeah, I, I, I think I think that's a good point. We should we should say that what Paul's saying I think is absolutely right, which is that this is actually a really good first or early euro to play because it teaches a lot. It doesn't take too long. But it also isn't one of these games that you don't have to study and you don't gradually get better at. It's a game you can play for quite some time. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it says age twelve plus, so clearly it's meant for you know a, a younger audience to get into the, the hobby. We we rolled the dice, Jake. We figured you could handle twelve plus. So. That's my sweet spot, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, what's funny is like there are people in our group who do not like this game. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it, it's it's really it's, it's very polarizing in that way. Like you know, I, I was glad that like Ben played it for the first time with us uh, last Thursday and over crushes. Tuesday and he loved it and I'm so glad but like there are people who played it uh, in our group and go like oh yeah I remember we don't play this game anymore <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> well I, uh, you know I think that for for in most plays the, the optimal play is sometimes to draft a character and to watch him to watch him die off. Like even optimal play is to be sacrificing characters and guys, and and it, the play experience isn't isn't largely positive. It could be a lot negative, sure. and I don't mean negative in terms of in terms of complete experience, but I do mean that it is a game that is about managing disaster. And that, no, yeah, no. And, yeah. and and that that you know that ha hangs a, a a dark cloud over the game for some people. Um, whereas mm -hmm. when I play it, I I'm kind of fascinated by that. You know, I'm fascinated sure. by a game that plays very very differently than, and frankly, differently than than um, his own games. His own games, Stefan Feld games. He's was an early adopter of the Scooby Snack School of Design, where sure. I take this action and hey, I get this little extra benefit. And oh, look, mm -hmm. I took this action and that completes this section. And when I complete this section, I get this little bonus. And then with this little bonus, I place it here. And guess what? I get this other little bonus. And and so it, it's it's actually very antithetical to a lot of his design canon. Yeah, no. Like My favorite part of the game was when I chose very randomly a card that totally screwed Paul over without ill intention. But I, I really, uh, really enjoyed that. I guess yeah, they, it doesn't count. Honest. I love it, that. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. Like you know, you have if you're gonna stab me in the heart, you guys do it from the front. You gotta mean <laughs> no, it. No, but I think you gotta it mean really it. Perfectly characterizes where I'm coming from, which is if I happen to stab you in the heart, it certainly wasn't intentional. <laughs> Man. Uh, I don't. I don't know what else we have to say about uh, about this, other than it is a very uh, Paul. Paul, your description was fantastic. It, it really oh, laid out I what agree. the game is. Um, uh, it's a it's a really good game. It should play in about ninety minutes, and mm -hmm. it is a it is a full meal in ninety minutes. That is yeah, for no, sure. Yeah, it was fun. It was it, super fun. It's on it's on VGA like Board Game Arena. Uh, I think people should play more of it. I think like you know it's especially if you have a group that really is like I will say if you are a strategy based person who really wants you know that kind of precision and see, and build your engine and have it grow and this is not for you or <laughs> it is <laughs> or it's for you so that you can like you know grow some width so some breadth of your ex experience because you know it's really tactical I personally like very tactical games I like the idea of like dealing with chaos management you know yes. juggling plates i mean that 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 
decision space is very interesting to me. Uh, but some people want a peaceful experience. You will not feel at peace playing this game. You yeah. know. I mean, there's games where you're building an engine and the engine gets better and better and better. This is more like that engine that is falling apart as you're racing along. Exactly. And you're trying to You're trying to, to put rubber bands around this and to pour water into the radiator as it's leaking out of the bottom just to have enough to get across that finish line, right? That's really yeah, the experience of this, which, is, which yeah. makes it quite unique. It, it's a, it's a, a very different than most games. I, I do recommend yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And not to be confused with Year of the Dragon, which, of course, is that amazing movie starring Mickey Rourke and John Mann. Oh, <laughs> so good. So good. <laughs> so that's In the Year of the Dragon, 2007 release, Stefan Feld. Uh, we recommend that you check it out. Board Game Arena is a great place to play it. Hey, if you enjoyed that video, you very well might enjoy the other videos you now see being suggested to you on screen. Also, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could like, share, or subscribe to our Game Brain channel. Thanks so much.